Yet in our son, a doctor and a bay. Doctor and a bay, no coshakoran. Into a coshakoran, we are young, and our friend, a dandy moon. And all Casacasa, Casacasa, Casacan, the guys are money. Can't dear, eh, a possible, I mean, mean, sorry. Eh, Aquadano, say, see, Aquadano, we will see you. Yamine, Yaminage, and I'm sorry, or some of the Aquadan, and the Colossal, some of Fano. I'm on Jano Horn, this and a flam of Papa. Tim one and flam papa. Me flam papa, we are fed and fed. Nicolo, and see, oh, now I will papa buy. Would the wood to know? And I'll papa buy. It's our papa buy and share the old buy. And then see, uncle. And then you know, boy. And then watch around, but I'm not much like what I saw the mini pier yet. Need your new one, you know. Ain't you not me? Yammy person, me who only sell. But I'm not crying over now. Light no horn and not oxygen sinus. So. The dear Samusu. ไอ้เดเทมนอร์เรมาคลานุเซอซิกิมาอุซัวลิปไกเอทิวิคิคิคิเทโนอซัวเยไลท์ออฟนิเปนอคอยเอคอยเอนาเดนาบาซิโรอ
opinion about, uh, uh, opinion on. Yes, last night, my lights went off from 12 p.m., came back around 2 a.m., you understand? Uh, the day before, when I, was come, when I was coming to your show, and it's been so for like about three months, because mm -hmm. I had a, 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 a black Christmas, a black New Year. and So I think that's a factor. I can't believe uh, we are trying to give definitions to what is doom. So the fact of what I do is no oh. of so is on. <laughs> so really for me, the, 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 the conversation my view should be about uh, why we are back to square one, you understand, mm -hmm. and who should be held accountable, accountable you okay. understand. And, and, and then those facts uh, should guide our people when they are going to make decisions come 2024. Because, oh, thank you. Because the fact is we are in doing so. We are in doing so. Doom so. Doom so back. But did it ever go away? You see, <laughs> I know that when the NDC were leaving office, the suggestion was that they had solved the doing so problem. What they had done was that they had stopped the periodic intermittent switching off of lights, but they hadn't solved the problem because the problem remains. What is our problem? Our problem is that we don't plan. We don't even consider the, the, even the information we already have, not the one we have to go and sit in a lab and figure out, but the information we already have about the rate at which our population grows, about the rate at which our demand for power grows, about the amount of installed capacity we have, about the age of the transformers that are scattered across the country, about the, the, the maintenance schedules for these uh, you know, plants that are supposed to provide us power, about the cost of gas and the availability of gas. This is information we have. We don't have to guess at any of this information. So all we have to do is engage brain, take all this information and determine that, okay, based on this, this year, it will cost us this much to keep the lights on. Next year, it will cost us this much. The following year, this much. The year after that, we will have to add this much installed capacity. It will cost us this much. These are, these are decisions that secondary school children could make if you give them the correct variables. But Republic of Ghana still can't. And we keep insisting we solve the problem, we solve the problem. What, sort of, what problem did we solve? So for you, Doomson never went it away. It never went anywhere. Okay. What, what happened was that for some time the lights were kept on. So we had But solved. it wasn't kept on because we had solved the problem. Okay. You see what I'm so saying? So we had so. We, 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 it was kept on because the next crisis hadn't come. Okay. But Kojo, my question is very specific. It's doom so. Yes, and I'm saying the problem never went away. Okay. The thing that makes our lights go off never went away. Okay. Okay, Kwame, it's doom so back. Well, hmm. to the extent that we're sleeping in darkness, doom so is with us. But it's also important to understand that this has been a perennial issue. Indeed, in 1982 to 1984, there was Dumso. In 2000, 2006, there was Dumso. During Mills Mahama, we saw Dumso. And we are seeing Dumso now. But the derivative causes of the Dumso in 1982, between 1982 till when Kufu, sorry, till when Mahama left office i believe are different because at the time if you check we were solely relying on hydro and then subsequently thermal and then subsequently we added on and added on so if you check at the time we had we didn't have rainfall and so when the levels come down you would experience them so so that was peculiar to the 1982s because at the time akusomo was the only source of power then if you come to mahamed's time I don't know whether it's a truism or not, but they indicated to us that the cause of the doomso at the time was an issue of generation, that we didn't have capacity to supply. And so they needed to invest hugely in order that we'd be able to what, generate more and distribute. Mm. But because we didn't have that, we slept in darkness for what? For a year, close to two years. So that was also peculiar mm. to the Mahama situation. Now, it is not in doubt that before Mahama left office in 2000, 
and 16. They had added some megawatts of power to our generation. It's not in doubt. Which invariably, in my estimation, should have resolved the issue of doom. So that's why Kojo tells you that it is still on. Just that it has moved through different phases. One hydro, one generation. Where we are now, perhaps, we need to understand why we are experiencing the dooms on today. Because in terms of generation, I think everybody has admitted, all the political device have admitted that there's no issue with generation. Okay. Respectfully, so, I'm, I'm, I'm landing on this. Respectfully. Hold on. Respectfully. I wanted us to agree on what is happening. Then we come to the why. Oh, no, no, no. So, so, so this first one is okay. that. So, so, so is Doomsaw back? Doom, then you can oh, go ahead I, and I think that why. from, yes, Doomsaw is back. It's back. Okay, now. Now, so oh, the, okay. the why for me, <laughs> <laughs> the why for me is the over politicization with, in my estimation, sectors which are very sensitive to our well-being as, as a people. Right. Because where we are now, if there's that admission that there is no issue with generation, then why are we experiencing what we're experiencing? It means that perhaps it's fiscal, it's monetary. We are unable to power the thermal plants. We are unable to pay for the distribution or the supply of the of the power that that uh, that we are we are generating right, right? right because if you check we have and i've explained before hydro thermal um gas and all those you know other um elements you know coming together to give you the power right but you need money to be able to run them if you don't have money to run them obviously you cannot sustain it right. the question then becomes how is it that we have enjoyed power from 2016 till now how how are we able to do we'll it? answer that all right we'll answer that question now the reason why i was asking if we have doom you know if doom is back and if it's, it's because of you know the, the positioning of the sector minister you know our sector minister insists that you know i mean th there's no doom so i want us to take his views Come back to you. So I, I wanted a clarification in the studios. There are four of us here. I say Dumso is back. This morning before I left home, there was no light. I've called home. There's still no light. You know, so this is from what, maybe 8 o'clock till now, no light. You know, so, so clearly that is Doom. It will come back. That will be so, you know, so for me, Dumso is back, right? You say Dumso is back. You say, where did it go, right? You say it's back. So I just wanted to have sort of this to represent the views in Ghana as to whether we are in doom so or not and then take the sector minister's um, 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 reflections and then come back to the city. So let's listen to what our minister um, has to say about the issue. The power disruptions have caused major concerns for the public over the past weeks. Agencies responsible for producing electricity have been accusing one another for being the cause of the outages. The Energy Minister, Dr. Matthew Opoku Prempe, on the sidelines of an event in Kumase, insisted that the current power situation is better than it was under the Etual and DC administration. He maintains that demands for a load-shedding timetable are equal to wishing evil for the country. If you are comparing four years, four years, MPP administration, energy sector is 300 times better than normal. But we are still experiencing doom so. Nobody has said we haven't. I'm just saying it's far much better than Dormama ever did. You, you do admit that there's doom so. That is the word you use. I have never used that word. I promised you that we are going to work on it. And it's not a work that is a single event. It's a process. And we'll continue to work on it. For the energy sector to become better. The Public Utilities Regulatory Commission has ordered the electricity company to rectify its financial and operational discrepancies or prepare to face sanctions. Have you heard of calls for a timetable? Ask those who want yes. to bring it. They should bring the timetable. If there, if there is, I, I haven't seen any timetable. So my my people are calling for it. They bring a timetable. What do you mean? The ECG says that there is no timetable coming. Why do you want to bring a timetable? What purpose? Why, why, why would somebody get up and wish evil or bad for the country? 
Were you in Ghana and that your mom? Did you live in this country and that Did you live in this country and that your mom? The power disruptions have caused major concerns for the public over the past weeks. Agencies responsible for producing electricity have been accusing one another for being the cause of the outages. The Energy Minister, Dr. Matthew Opoku Prempe, on the sidelines of an event in Kumase. In if you are comparing four years, four years, MPP administration, energy sector is 300 times better than your mom. But we are still experiencing doom so. Nobody has said we haven't. I'm just saying, it's far much better than... So that was the sector minister. I was just about to credit um, TV3 um, for that um, news vice. But could you say it's actually from Joy? It's a Joy news video. Right. I don't know how TV3 got their logo on it. But right. they didn't make the video. Right. Okay. So we will credit Joy and credit TV3. Yeah. We got it from. <laughs> but, but, but the point is made. Our, our energy minister seems rather irritated, you know, um, that anybody. Is questioning him about the state of um, electricity. Uh, it's interesting for me because you've seen an earlier video of, you know, um, the boss. Oh, no, no, no. Just to put it together. Who, who also said that it's not your right as a Ghanaian. You know, electricity is not, it's, not, it's, it's just, um, what did he say? He said it was a privilege, you know. And then we have a sector minister who is also very irritated you know, um, by questioning of, I mean, what do you make of this? A, a, a clear lack of leadership and uh, even, even before we go to the leadership side, I think could you set the, uh, as on the correct path, as in, as I say correct path, in terms of the kind of definition he gives to do so, but he, as in, his definition is really deep, as in deeper than how we took it, because you see there is, the side that we all see, that's the output, Doom. that's so what we all see. Now, probably what a lot of us didn't consider is was the input, and, and that's where the uh, was called. So they do the politics with the with the output, and nobody really pays attention to the to the input. Now, yes, uh, probably it, it could be planning, and but you see, for me, why this issue makes me really angry, because uh, I'm so convinced it's not an issue of planning. Like, it was in 2018 they did the energy sector recovery program. And per that program, they were able to identify what the problems were. And they came up with beautiful solutions. No, could, could you talk about every year? So like in, at the beginning of the year, this is how much we need. It, it was all in the program. That's that. Now to understand what they did, I think we have to put it into proper pers uh, perspective, especially when we were talking about the Jomama situation. See, when Jomama was faced with his, his do so, it was an issue of... Uh, a lot of factors, let's say over the population, the demand, uh, outweighing, let's say, the supply. So what he did was to deal, tackle the problem from the, uh, the generation side. So he opened up that sector to private sector uh, uh, investment and all. And so by the time he was done, we had what the MPP said, say is, uh, what's it called, uh, uh, excess capacity. Now, other thing he did was, he recognized the fact that the problem was a financial one. And so he enacted the law, the Energy Sector Levy Act. The whole focus of that act was to uh, place some levies on uh, pe petroleum products, raise some money, and then use it to take care of the uh, what he called the legacy debt. Another time it was about 2.4. Now he left power in 2016, in, in 2017. Now when the MPP came, or when Edna came, what they did was to then collateralize the ESLA funds, and then used it to raise money locally. They even set up a, a trust, an Esla trust and all, you know, raise money locally. And the whole idea was, let's take care of the, of the, of the legacy debt, put ourselves, let's say, at ground zero, and then recalibrate the energy uh, uh, sector. So to that end, they then initiated, initiated this energy sector recovery program which in essence was to try to understand why we even accumulated the debt in the first place and what strategies we were able to put in place to ensure that, first of all, to solve the problem, 
bring the energy sector to what they called financial vi uh, viability and then do so and that's I like the difference and that's what I'm saying I like the definition could you give because really like my big brother my fellow here said the car dump thing mm -hmm. you understand <laughs> <laughs> you understand it looked it looked very dry and firm mm -hmm. and, and and that's what has happened to us so now the reason I'm so disappointed is when you read the program they were able to identify what the problems were essentially one the cost of the uh, uh, production that's the independent mm. production the cost of the gas the cost of sorry the technical what they call the technical losses because then we, because you when you look at the supply chain the energy supply or the electricity supply chain you have the trans the production the transmission and the the commercial side where you you uh, you sell now for a very long time green co has been doing the transmission you know our transmission line certainly mm. and so when let's say you buy when the government or grid co or whoever buys buys let's say 100 megawatts of electricity by the time it gets to ecg for distribution about 30 percent of it is lost now the we see once we bring private sector into some some of these things they, they want their cash they don't work for nyami so and, and they understand that listen i'm selling him 100 megawatts but by the time he gets to distribute it to the consumers it will be about 70. so sharply to to a uh, 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 take care of his rigs. He said, "Listen, I'm buying. I'm giving 100 megawatts. I don't care. If I'm taking 100 megawatts money. <laughs> you understand? You are you the government. You know that 30 percent will be lost by just the transmission. Now, there has been no deliberate investment into the trans uh, transmission side. So already, already in the in the commerce of the energy business, just the transmission alone, 30 percent loss." Then we have another, then they also identify that they've had another huge problem with the commercial side. And so they recognize that in every year, ECG makes, and so ECG is the institution that sells energy. They try to bring PDS into it. We know all the, but that's a, another topic for a different, but they brought ECG themselves say, say that every year they make $180 million loss. Out of that $180 million loss because of people not uh, pay and but they are, they are those just that I've not come to the losses they also make because of transmitters and all those things. But just just the collection of them and they lose 180 million dollars. Now the sub bit is ab about 150 million of those losses are occasioned by government, the ministries, the agencies, the departments refuse to pay. Yes. And you see, and they've identified this. The government of Africa, and in that report, they said they, they cost something annual, as in let's say annual loss. You understand? They, they, as in how much they need to they need to pay annual shortfall. So in every year they they recognize or they identify how much was the shortfall every year, and they said that to bring us to financial viability, one of the things they need to tackle was to put down some money. They call it some stabilize, stabilization money to pay for this annual short for they they in fact they even went further to to categorize the their solutions into phases so phase one will do this phase two will do that and then they set up the energy sector recovery task force headed by this energy minister by the energy minister right now is the energy minister who says we should bring our time and you have my timetable here because you can, 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 can take it for me i have my team <laughs> I, have, I have my here you understand <laughs> and so i'm saying could you make an excellent point because it's a country that plans that fails to plan, plans to fail. But our issue is not because we haven't planned. Our issue is not because or there has not been an attempt to plan. I, I don't know why they did this energy sector recovery program if don't if they didn't have any form of commitment to implementing it. And so my, dis my disappointment is born out of the clear lack of commitment. Clearly, because you know it's like it's like going to the hospital, the doctor prescribing or, or, or diagnosing you and prescribing drugs for you and you deliberately don't take those drugs you understand then you are, you are committing suicide you know in Ghana suicide attempt to, to commit suicide is a is an is an offense see that's the situation we are in now we have leaders who don't care for they've proven, they've proven that beyond any shred of doubt they don't care they simply don't care about the country they don't care about the world being of the citizens of this country they don't believe in the idea of a Ghana. They don't. And, 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 and I'm so convinced 
because you see where you recognize that the 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 the, the, the crisis uh, the dual crisis was because of uh, uh, what's it called certain key problems within the sector. You spend money, bring consultants, and diagnose and also prefer solutions. And in fact, they said that when they are through with that program by 2023, do by so. By you mean this government? Yeah, yeah, yeah but so the uh, 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 energy sector recovery program. So the, the, the programs are in 2018. So yes, of course, none of those uh, 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 government, none of those government did the energy sector recovery program. You understand? So you see, like when I said. They lie like children. I was oh, lawyer, you're too harsh. But they lie like children. Because you see, what is happening is that they know that they, they know exactly what the problem is. They know that we are in a worse situation than, than, than they came to meet. Because, mm. and, 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 and my, my definition, I said so, but I think I, I, I'll take Kujo's definition. Mm. Because, so per that definition. We have the superficial because definition. Because and then we have a deep definition. Yeah, the deep one, the so one. The superficial one, we do have we to do so. And that one, you see, you, you said something between yeah. 2017 and, let's say, 2020. We had lights. But really, there was no because the problems were still there. Yes, but we thought we were okay. Now, what is going to happen is that the problems will even uh, cascade because, like every year, these problems are compounding. Mm -hmm. You understand? As we stand now, and uh, I'm taking this definition, the dozo will even be worse. Will get worse because, in terms of the financial situation, that next day the dozo. We are in a crazy situation. We are broke. It's, it's not about the country being broke. Or even the country being broke, the sector. Is in a crazy financial situation, and so when you do a program, which we say that it dictates that if you follow the program by 2023, you break even. The sector will break even mm. by 2023. Mm. Then they should come and tell us. So what did they do, or why? Why is it that by 2023 we are even in a worse financial situation than we were in in 2018? And, and you know what even makes the matter worse. Mm. No, you know what even makes the matter worse. Mm. I think from that period, the private people, apart from government, the private people, we it's prepared who oh, as we right. give them money, you understand? So that idea of okay, we, we provide energy and then we chase them for money. So far as the private people are concerned, it's no longer there. You understand? So if the problem is because of government, if because uh, from the so you the government you are you have not you come you are unable to pay the IPPs. You are you are not investing and or, or putting money into the transmission side you two are after you've consumed the energy yeah you understand after you've consumed the power you don't pay now is it your plan that you're going to destroy the private people of this country is that your strategy L lawyer we'll come back we'll, we'll come back to you we'll come back to you uh, God, i don't know where to start okay i think the first thing that we have to accept is that the whole problem sits at ecg but the solution can never come from ecg Right? That's where the problem sits. We all pay our money to ECG. They are the company that has been set up by government to provide us with electricity. We give our money to them. So if we're not getting electricity, they are the only ones we can question because they are the ones we have a contract with. Okay? So the problem is there. It's there with them. They are the ones who are unable to collect their, you know, the full complement of their payments. So they have a 180 million, what, city or dollar? Dollar hole every year. They are the ones who, by the time they even receive the thing they are coming to sell to us, they've lost 30% of it. Okay? It's, the problem is all at ECG. But ECG can never be the solution. It's not possible. Government is the one not paying its bills to ECG. That's government. The transmission. Whatever needs to be done for this transmission to stop making these losses, who should do it? Where does that solution sit? We have an energy minister, and I'll come to him later. Let me hold. I'll, I'll come to him. <laughs> you know, I feel sad. Throughout the years, ECG has had MDs who have just been our punching bags. We've been insulted because they have not been delivering. The company has not been delivering. You just imagine, you've set, you've, you've, you've set up a company to serve the public, right? You, you lawyer, you've set up a company to serve the public, but you set up the company to fail. You put everything in place so that this company can never make profit. People continue to demand a service from the company, but you set it up so that it can never supply that service, no matter what. Just from the get-go, they, they are losing money at the beginning and the end. 
So there's no way they can serve their customers. You have set it up that way. People continue to get angry with this company because they are giving them money and not getting their service back. Then you are sitting quietly at home, watching people get angry with that company. And then when someone comes to ask you, because you are supposed to be in charge, comes to ask you, you tell them that if, if it doesn't, if it bothers you, go and make your own timetable. Do you understand? So I'm feeding into what you said that these people genuinely don't care. They don't care. They know that there's a problem at ECG. They know that the solution must come from the government, not from ECG. ECG can't solve these problems. It's not possible. In fact, for the first time, they got an MD who, until this Doomsaw yeah. session started, this most recent session of Doomsaw started, was actually attracting praise from Ghanaians. People thought he was doing a good job. He was turning things around. It, at least he improved their recoveries. On, on the steam of their own company, the, the, on, on the company's own steam, he improved their recoveries. Right? Even this cash waterfall mechanism and all that, a lot of it was even the input came from him. So he was attracting praise. People were happy with how he was handling things. Another crisis that he fixed, which now some, someone has turned against him, do you remember when the Krobo people were not paying for their electricity? Do you remember there was some incident in Krobo where they went to spoil some transformer? In fact, it started because they didn't want to pay their bills. So ECG went there and said, okay, if you people are not going to pay your bills, we'll switch off the thing. I mean, pay your bills, come on. Everyone is paying. Even hospitals are being switched off so they pay their bills. You Krobo people, you say you won't pay. So they went and switched off the transformer and they beat up the ECG staff. You remember this, right? He was being interviewed about that. And he was telling the people of Krobo that, look, the electricity you get is a privilege. It's not a right. That's what he said to the Krobo people. Someone has gone to cut that and is now playing it back to Ghanaians. Now that Dumso is on. And making it seem like ECG boss is telling us today that the power that we are not getting is because, I mean, it's a privilege, not a right. So, so this I haven't is seen how the full video. I've only well, seen that I, I have yeah, I haven't I seen the up. full so, so video. So I, I can't speak to this. Well, I, it's fine. Yeah. I, I, I happen Just to have followed that interview, so I know video. where it came from. Okay. I know he was speaking to someone called Akusia. Yes. Something. Yes. This interview was aired on Joy News. So I, I, I know. Right. I know that that's where it right. came from. Right. But this is all to point to the fact that this is now a political thing. It's now a political thing. Now, let me inch closer to the energy minister. So you see, currently, what's happening is a lot of blame going back and forth. So ECG is insisting that, oh, there's no doom. So trying to, uh, uh, um, the, the MD is trying to sort of uh, absorb the heat, right? That, oh, no, no, there's no doom. So some transformers be that are spoiled, uh, 600 and something transformers. Uh, as soon as we fix them, this problem will be solved. Look, that's 600 and something transformers they make up about 5% of the transformers in this country. Are you sure that 5% of our transformers not working can be the cause of this nationwide doomsday we're experiencing today? No, but he said it. Because he thought that he could try and buy people time, save people some fees. Why he thought he should do that, I don't know. But that is the commitment he made. And so now all the flack is coming to him. Now the person he tried to save is the energy minister will come back to him so now blame is going around in the sector purc says you people you are not sticking to your cash waterfall you know arrangement what which should have been paying the independent power producers so that there's no debt there but the debt is accruing and these people you remember when they were threatening to switch off their machines if they do it's a big deal so purc is concerned about that and they are saying look why are you not paying them the full amount mm. ecg boss too is saying that telling me i try to manage the thing because I realized that some few will be that government should pay for, that they are not paying for. If I don't pay for it, the lights will go off. So I paid for that fuel so that the lights would stay on back then. That's what the money went for. That's why there wasn't enough to come and pay these IPPs. Mm. But of course, that is not what the cash waterfall arrangement stipulates. So of course, he's in trouble for that as well. Right? So, PURC is going on against them. 
Uh, then the independent power producers also say, by the way, look, all this thing that we are complaining about, actually, if VRE wasn't selling about half of the power they generate through the hydroelectric, you know, if they were not selling about half of it to foreign countries, for half the price, they sell the same power to us. If they were not doing that, we wouldn't have this problem. At least that would have cushioned us until we solve whatever right. money problem we have. Right? So then the VRA also comes back to say, oh, but we've been doing this all this time. Why? So you see, a lot of blame is going around. We don't even know. It's like watching a tennis match. We don't know where to send our anger to. But while we are doing all this, there is somebody who is responsible for all of them. The energy minister. All these organizations whose entire purpose is to work so that we have power. That's it. Any of these organizations, PURC, VRE, uh, Gridco, ECG, they are, they, the whole reason why these organizations exist is to make sure that we have power in our homes when we pay for power. Right? So if all of them are failing because we don't have power in our homes, who should we blame? One of the institutions or the guy whose job it is to make sure the whole sector works. But you see, again, we were all diverted by the back and forth, the tennis match. So we forgot that the umpire himself is the one we should be blaming. We did the same with Ken Ophoriata. When the country was sinking, we were busy fighting amongst ourselves. But it was him. It was his job to manage the economy. Nobody was paying attention to him. We did that with Ken. We're doing that with Napo. So I am glad somebody caught him at his time of the month for him to come and spew those insulting words that he felt it was appropriate for him to say to the people of Ghana that if we are bothered, we should go and make our own timetable. Who does that remind you of? Remember when uh, uh, President Akufuadu was interviewed by Kwame Savakai? And he asked him a question that had been sent him by the chief of Aflau. That when are you coming to finish my e-blocks? And Akufu Adu said, if it's so important to you, finish it to yourself. Mm. The president said that to a chief. Well, now you understand why he appointed Napu as his energy minister. And the worst part of it was, when he was asked why we can't have a timetable, he said, why do you wish evil mm. on this country? So me, that every week I buy two injections of insulin. Each one costs me almost 600 Ghana cities. That's 1,200 Ghana cities a week that I spend just to stay alive. Ama. Me now, my salary is how much? Every week I spend 1,200 to buy these two life saving injections. I put them in my fridge and I go to work. Then I come back in the evening and they are spoiled. Because the lights went off while I was at work and nobody had the decency to inform me that they'll be off so that maybe I could have organized some ice chest and kept them in there. So that my 1,200 CDs that I've just spent doesn't evaporate into thin air. You don't think that I should have the right to know that you're going to take away the light I've paid for. Rather, I am evil. It's not your fault, Energy Minister Matthew Poku Prempe. Your generator will never go off because I sweat to pay tax to put diesel in it for you. That's why you can come and sit in front of me and tell me that me, I wish evil for the country. You, you are a Ghanaian. I am the evil one who wishes evil for the country because I say, tell me before you take my light. Really? And this guy wants to be vice president. He wants to be running mate to somebody so that they will vote in and make him our vice president so when the president travels he will be the president this guy okay well i mean you Ghanaians now you have a record of choosing some very interesting people to lead you so here's another one if you are interested he's telling you who he is there is nothing more upsetting look when when you were playing that thing back i was i was it took everything i have to stay calm in the face of that insult. I mean, Nature, I've paid for my electricity. You can't give it to me. But I am evil. 
that's our energy man. you see in any other place on this planet that man would have resigned he would have packed up and gone home not, not even because he he has no respect but because he has failed and you can you imagine you fail and then you don't you don't respect on top of it come on in any part of the world you would have resigned and gone home but no you have the, the temerity to put on your sunglasses and come and tell me that i am evil because i say give me a timetable then afterwards you come to me and come and ask me for my vote me evil guy i should vote for you i'm waiting it's, it's serious so come here. It, well, it's i think uh Kojo and uh, lawyer have spoken a lot um, and it resonates with me and I'm sure it will resonate with um, all of us as Ghanaians. Um, but for me, this is the result of mediocrity and the fact that Ghanaians have the penchant of celebrating mediocrity because why else would we sit down in the face of these experiences to not utter a word and to question government why we are in this mess you listen around up here have you ever heard anyone being direct and specific in asking questions of government as to why we are here hypocrisy mediocrity in 2015, Matthew Opoku Prempe was part of the a demonstration they call Wongbo demonstration. Wongbo. I don't speak guy. What is the uh, is what? Yeah, we are dying. Wongbo come come and let's watch that because I have that video. Let's watch that in oh, camera. Yeah, it is. Yes. Yes, you are yes, part of that. Come and go on. Maybe we'll just play no, it over. As we talk, the video will play. Come and go on. Go on. MCL, let the video play as it Please go ahead, Kwame. I've lost my Oh, I'm sorry. You said he, he was fine. involved in a demonstration. I mean, play the video. Play the video. Play the okay. video. Yeah. So, viewers, let's watch this video. evident from the video that we just saw how unprincipled and how hypocritic your energy minister is this is a guy who was barking like a wild dog in 2015 itemizing the reasons why we needed light and explaining to the Ghanaian people at the time that if you feel the heat that we are feeling. So he was addressing Mahama. That if Mahama felt the heat, if Mahama was spending 60% of his salary on diesel to power his light, he would not have plunged this country into doom. So this same Napu, six, seven years down the, the is it the line on the lead? <laughs> is now telling us that what we are experiencing today 
it's not doom so and that if we needed a timetable we should go and create our own timetable and maybe share it with the ministry <coughs> such impudence such disrespect how do you speak to the Ghanaian people with such disdain you know you must think so little of the Ghanaian people to spew this garbage because clearly what we are asking for is very simple what is governance what is go what is government because the very essence of government is to ensure that the aspirations and the needs of the people are met correct so if the aspirations and the needs of the people are not met and the people have, have, have found it expedient to ask questions and demand true accountability from you you are even lucky people have not embarked on demonstrations yet they are only asking questions you are lucky you. and then you say what that you don't think that it is relevant for us to ask those questions you see when you vote for people who do not have the country at heart who are not patriotic enough who are self-centered and selfish people who are only here to steal from the people this is what you get because if he cared deeply about the woes of the Ghanaian people he would have been magnanimous with the way he spoke to us because then you would you would put yourself in the shoes of the Ghanaian people and you would have addressed us in a manner that will calm us even even if we are so upset you would find a way of communicating to us so that in the final analysis we say that yes okay we are experiencing doom so however the minister has spoken in such a manner that we find that at least he cares about the matter and he cares about the Ghanaian people so demonstrate that don't come and insult us Napo. okay now but there's there's a there's a twist to the to the issue um you know so one we are in doom so we don't to the extent that we don't have lights and this is me still staying superficial and very um if you like you know at the surface not being deep so so we are experiencing them so now that's one issue that's a big issue but i find that also the communication around it has been so terribly terrible you know um everybody who is communicating on it so far hasn't done a good job um only today we've come to see or i've come to see a facebook post from um, Gabi Asari or Chidako. He says, and I'm reading, he says, there's something mysteriously amiss somewhere. You have managed to keep the lights on for seven years. Even during the height of the economic crisis in 2022, why now? Still scratching my head. And with this, he seems to, so, so first of all, my issue is with the you have, right? When he says you have money to keep the light, is he talking about his government? Is that the you have? That's one. Then two, um, he seems to be hinting at a sabotage, right? He says what? Um, 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 he's scratching his head. Why now? There's something, you know, mysteriously amiss somewhere. So suggesting that somebody's, you know, sabotaging or playing, I, I, I don't know. At the end of the day, if I were Kojo Yangson, you know, and, and Kojo, as you spoke about, you know, um, needing the two shots every week i felt that right because i have my own needs of electricity that i'm grappling with but in the face of what you say that i feel as though mine then becomes vain you know i realize that wait there are people who would need it for way more than i think i need it for you know i need it for what everybody else needs it for keeping my food keep, that's what i'm saying but then somebody need, and of course food is life i get that but somebody needs it for something even more pressing than for instance the videos that we play the baby that is alleged to have died because of the absence of electricity so his very minute to minute existence is dependent on electricity. so if if in the face of this here we have somebody talking about, i mean so what's this supposed to mean and why would anybody think that at this moment it matters in the fray of the com conversation so terribly mismanaged the, the, the you know governance as everything else as, as our finances have been mismanaged our energy you know being mismanaged all of that but also just terrible communication you know um from the people who should know better just slight comments on that and then we move on to the main um, 
issue. Yeah, shall I? Oh, sure, sure. The Gabi tweet is very interesting. Very. I think it's very interesting. Very. Uh, I, I agree with all the, you know, the, the, the suggestions you see in it. Um, and yes, I mean, so Gabi himself is not a member of government. He's not an appointee. But he has that unique position because of how close he is to the president. That sometimes his posts are seen as maybe like barometers, you know. Um, they, are, they, are, they are sticking their finger out to see where the weather, you know, where the wind is blowing, right? With posts that Gabi puts out there. So Gabi is suggesting that we don't know why this problem is happening now. Like he, that's his suggestion that those who are running the country have no idea why the lights are going off. We managed to keep the lights on for seven years. Why would they go off now? Now, if that is what is being said, then I'm a bit concerned because it will mean that then they didn't even know how they kept the lights on for seven years. They had no idea. If they so don't know why lucky. they are off now. How very lucky. Right? If they, if they don't know why the lights are off now, then they, they have no idea how they kept them on for seven years. That's why he's scratching his head, right? But listen, any time a post like that comes from someone in his privileged position, my, my first calculation is that he knows something I don't. He definitely knows something I don't. Oh, he wants us to think he knows something we don't. No, 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 no. There's also that. He, actually, the post is suggesting he doesn't know. That's actually the, the, the state in which the post is presented. Like, I'm scratching my head. I don't know what's happening. But I'm saying that every time I see a post from Gabby, I, my first thought is, this man knows something I don't. So what does he know that I don't? That's what he wants you to ponder, Kujo. That's his plan. No. Um, his, his plan is to make us believe that he doesn't know. That's his plan. That he's scratching his head. He doesn't know how this is happening. I am saying that I calculate beyond that to say he's posting this because of something he knows that I don't know. And what he knows is most likely the reason why this is happening. Or the reason that is about to be announced why this is happening. Kitching. You see, Bingo. now, uh -huh, now Bingo. we're getting to my point. Bingo. Bingo. I genuinely believe that a post like this is simply heralding the announcement of some scapegoat. Someone or some people is or are about to be blamed for this and perhaps sacked, replaced. You see, it's not about the sacking, it's about the replacing. That is far more important. It's not about who gets fired, it's about who gets put instead. And I believe that this tweet is just to prepare our minds for the fact that someone is about to be blamed for this head scratcher of a problem the thing that they have done well for seven years someone has suddenly destroyed it in the eighth year and that person is about to be sacked me that is what i expect that's my analysis of this tweet but you are right about the communication that the communication has been subpar from all, excuse me, from all quarters. Of course, there is the disgraceful debacle of what the energy minister said, which I really don't want to go back to. I don't think my blood pressure medication, you know, <laughs> uh, is sufficient to handle that. But there is also the communication from ECG. And I talked about how it seemed like the ECG boss wanted to come and take bullets, wanted to protect others. Okay. And I, I have some sympathy for him, but at the same time, who else do I blame? Who else did I give my money to? Who else? It's the ECG that I paid for electricity. So unfortunately, that's the only point at which I can demand accountability. Mm -hmm. So even if he had come to tell me that, well, actually, this is not my fault. It's greed cool. Or it, even that would have been unsatisfactory to me. Mm -hmm. So he's really stuck between a rock and a hard place. What does he really do? What does he really say? In this situation he chose to be a martyr right and come and face the music and make it seem like oh look we are the ones trying to replace some 600 yeah. transformers yeah. it is us we are the ones who have caused this problem but we are solving it you know and as soon as we've replaced these 600 transformers your lights will go, come back on yeah. 
But, I mean, unfortunately, it just doesn't compute. I'm not an electrical engineer, but I know that if the problem is that my transformer is overloading, that can never result in a periodic light off which lasts the same six eight hours at a time ridiculous and after my area comes uh, goes off and comes on your area goes off and comes on then yours then yours and it's right. across the country for only 600 transformers no it doesn't compete i'm not an engineer but it doesn't work out for me but unfortunately that's the communication that he you know decided to go with and you see maybe he had hoped that whatever the real problem is would get solved quickly because it's most likely a money thing so he had probably hoped that he only has to keep that story going for a few days managed yes us. and then the problem will get solved but you see he forgot that his minister is napu so the problem persists because I'm, I'm sorry i mean you have to care about the problem in order to solve it to solve the problem uh -huh. to solve that the is problem. right so the problem persists and right. so the the, the, the thing that the story is crumbling now Making him look even worse. I, I do have a lot of sympathy for Dubik Mahama. Right. You know, the position he's in is unfortunate. But really... Who caused him? Who caused him? I'm guessing that we let this go. We can go on to the, no the next topic. Yeah, we can, 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 can we go on to the next yeah, topic? Because right. uh, if, I, if I comment on this tweet, probably... Let us get to come here. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So, so let's leave let's leave the Facebook post. Right. So I mean, um, I'm going straight to um, Dr. Baumia in the GRA. Um, you know, uh, very interesting things are happening. Dr. Baumia says one thing, then the GRA comes back and says one thing. It's interesting for me. Again, let's watch this video. When we come back, we have the conversation. Stay with us. GRA can also tell who has filed and who has not filed a tax. And so it is rich data that is available to GRA. And that rich data, I am asking GRA to use that data. It is very, a very lazy approach to go and keep looking for taxes for people who are paying taxes already. When you could look at those who are not paying taxes, which is the vast majority, and they should be the ones that GRA should be focusing on. If they pay a little, the vast majority, we will get a lot more revenue without the need for any increases in taxes. So I'm admonishing GRA, I'm saying that the data is available now that we have put this together. You can tell who has not filed. Give your bonuses on the basis of how many new taxpayers your, your people can bring into the net. I think it will help Ghana better. Right, right. So that was our vice president, um, you know, expressing those views. Well, the VRA has also um, come out um, in a press release. It has, says, it has said, we have observed and listened with utter dismay and disbelief uh, reports on media platforms regarding pronunciations made by the vice president to the effect that GRA is harassing employees and businesses, you know, and it goes on and on and on. I, I don't think that we have enough time to go through it all. Um, Kwame, what do you make of all this? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm smiling because at least I get a chance to start. This is going to be eating all my points. <laughs> you see, Amma, this country, eh, I'm sorry, but it appears we joke too much. And it appears we believe in um, lip singing rather than facts. Because GRA, what is their work? Their work is to what? Is to go for taxes from companies. I just want to, you know, break it Simplify down. the issues. Go for taxes from companies. Mm -hmm. Okay, so help government create revenue. Now, because it's a state owned company, government has to give them targets. They have targets. They have to meet their target. And we know that the tax net is not wide enough to cover everybody. This thing is not... Uh, we've not always known this. 
okay so if you give them target of let's say one million dollars per month or monthly and then they are supposed to meet the target and they are they are unable to meet the target you govern you have a problem because then you'll not be able to get the money that you need to be able to govern okay so you've given them target you are expecting them to somehow find the money and bring it to you he says the targets are then, unrealistic hold on. ah but if for instance pan-african television you are the general manager you give the marketing manager target the manager the marketing manager has to go and find the money and bring it to you then you return around to say that oh the price uh, the how much you're selling the uh, what's it called the airtime. airtime is too expensive doesn't make sense to you it doesn't make sense you understand so listen listen this uh, uh, fanciful and childish way of trying to convince the Ghanaian people that we care because it's an election year for me is absolutely absolute balderdash it doesn't make they should, you see dr bomia and i don't want to descend on dr bomia look when he speaks i get upset when dr bomia opens his mouth i get very irritated and last time i escorated him i said listen you were the one who at the time in 2015 in fact before 2015 went around the country started having lectures at central university college pontificating trumpeting the fact that you had the magic wand and that you'll be able to deal with our, our economic economic Go on, economic economic woes all right and at the time i remember very carefully how he even indicated that at the port we were losing some one point something billion dollars and that when he was if he got the opportunity to become the vice president he would make sure that we dealt with the matters those issues at the port he said it fast forward what is happening at the port what is happening at the port you dr baumia you said that you will make sure that every constituency is given one million dollars we are in 2000 and 24 what has happened if Dominic Kwabina had one million dollars per consequence it would have been so fantastic I would not be experiencing the traffic that I experience anytime I'm driving home do you understand what I'm saying Amma? so you today you want to be president of this country so you want to circumvent the process and create the impression that you care so deeply about the Ghanaian people that what GRA is doing is not nice and that they have to redo things and rethink things and act in the best interest of of businesses uh, what, what is that you this country here has done has done domestic borrowing more than any this current government mm? the domestic exchange borrowing whatever they've done it more than any administration in the history of this country you take the money from the from the people you go borrowing you go a begging and then you are saying that GRA should do what? So I like the response from GRA. They are telling the vice president that look, Mr. Vice President, do lame. Now you say do lame. Now you need you Because ultimately you will come asking for money from us. Right, right, right. You understand what I'm saying? Completely. So ask for that. See, see, honestly, and I'm being very, very careful because I have friends who work with him directly okay and so sometimes when i speak they i don't know somehow they cut the video and I send it to them and they, but you see i think we must be truthful and we must we must demonstrate that we respect the Ghanaian people yeah. i would say and i like how mpp communicate generally but it's important that at this material time you try and look at your flaws find out why you were unable to do the things which you promised to the Ghanaian people and give us better reasons and better solutions to the problems don't come and make extra promises don't come and be promising that which you know in your heart that you cannot give to the Ghanaian people it's very upsetting right right let's hear you Kujo. right uh, you see there's another aspect to this thing another thing that the vice president said which I thought was unfortunate he made an announcement that uh, 
if he wins the election, he will give an amnesty. <laughs> yes, yes, to, yes. Yeah, to, <laughs> I, was, I was trying to say I forgot. <laughs> yeah, to uh, taxpayers, certain taxpayers. Yeah. That was unfortunate. In fact, everything he said was communicated unfortunately. This is how I would have said it because I think there is a point to be made. There is a point to be made about our tax regime, right? But if, it, if I was the vice president communicating at that event, I would have said it very differently. First of all, I would never have announced in advance a tax amnesty. That is just shooting yourself in there. I don't know what would be more painful than the foot. Shooting yourself in the... It's okay, we get it. We get yes. it. We get it, Koju. We get yes, it. Yes, in the lower abdomen. We get it, Koju. My wife is a wife. Thank you, lawyer. Shoot yourself with testers. Thank you, lawyer. Let's see. Or you won't try the P1. It's okay. It's okay. We, we, we get the you point. You don't do that. Because think about it carefully. If I'm a taxpayer today and I fall into the bracket that will be forgiven next year, I'll just stop paying tax now. Because there will be no consequence next year. And, uh, so essentially, that's an announcement that could end up costing the nation billions. Do you remember when the finance minister, uh, the, 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 the second, what did they call them? Like, the Chancellor of the Exchequer in the UK made an announcement about his plans and the market responded and there was some small loss. They sacked the guy. So I would definitely not have announced that. Yes, quoting, that's right. Unfortunate, around fortunate roots. Yes, I would not have announced that. The first, that first goof. Now let's get to the rest of it. Um, look, this is the point that has to be made, and this is how I would have said it. Unfortunately, Ghana still has not got its tax policy right. It's still wrong. It still puts too much pressure on the few people who obey the law. They are the ones who suffer. Mm -hmm. It's like you get punished for being law-abiding. Mm -hmm. That is a wrong tax regime. There are better ways to do it. In fact, it is not only costing the taxpayer. It's causing GRA to do unpleasant things. Mm -hmm. It's not their fault, but that's, that, that's all they can do. GRA doesn't make policy. GRA implements policy. So whatever they are doing is an implementation of the policy that exists. And unfortunately, this is causing GRA to rub up against businesses in a way that is not healthy because they have to enforce a policy which is not the best. So they are forced to now go and sit and look over the shoulder of a, a, a businessman, you know, just to ensure that they are getting the right tax one because that's the only law abiding person they can find. That's how I would have said it. I wouldn't have said it in a way that makes it look like GRA is the one doing the wrong thing because it's not up to them. Then I would outline what I would do differently. That's really what I would have done if I was the one communicating on that platform. Mm. It's unfortunate. He took a different tack. It came out wrong. But I, I have no doubt in my mind that the vice president, who knows economics more than me, definitely knows that GRA is not the one that is making up tax policy in this country. When the tax policy is done, GRA just goes out to implement it. So I know he knows, which means that the problem was in the communication. In this country now, 90% of our problems are caused by communication. We say things wrong. And that's what the vice president did on this occasion. That, that's all I have to say on this yeah. one. I'll, I'll, just to say that I think we do things wrong and then we say things wrong to manage what we've exactly. done Exactly. In this wrong. case, yes, the policy is right. wrong already. So we've done things something wrong. wrong. And then and we then say it. something yes, wrong. Yes. Yeah. Please don't. Uh, the vice president knew exactly what he was going to say. <laughs> it's not an issue of communication. He once again exhibited his legendary insincerity to the people of this country. You understand? Now, if you break down what he said, one, he said, Jerry are harassing people. They are asking people why, because Jerry gives unrealistic targets. Yes. And two, they are harassing the same few people because uh, our tax net isn't white. Do no, you want me to read it? Uh, yeah. Okay. He says, they are harassing businesses. That harassment is coming from the sort of target that is created at their office. They are setting unrealistic targets, and this is because the tax base is so narrow. You say to them, 
this is your target for this month and they are trying to figure out where do i go then for them it is very easy you go back to where you had it the last time Fantastic. you go to the taxpayers the people who are already paying taxes and then you have to come up with a new reason why they should pay more and so you come up with all sorts of stuff fantastic so so there are two issues here that clearly exhibits his insincerity why we shouldn't vote for him one he's talking about targets now where do they get their targets from you see he's saying in his capacity as the vice president of this country yeah, you, 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 you understand he's saying in his capacity as now the president has told us that his his excellency dr Omiya is the one going to manage the eco, eco, economy in his famous speech Paragraph 63, paragraph 65. He said he was taxed with the duty of managing the economy. We all know that the role government plays in any economy is in fiscal. How you raise money and how you spend money. Now, how are targets set? So you come and say you do free SHS. Free SHS is not free. It's not for Nyame. He has that. He has his own cost. So government says, I'm going to do free SHS. You come. You said you are going to uh, give every student tablet. That one also isn't free. It comes with the cost. Say so you're going to do NAPU. That one doesn't come free, it comes with a cost. Energy, it is energy issues. You say you are going to pay money every year. So, an aggregation of everything government thinks it needs to do. You are going to make roads, construct roads, do this. Recruit people. So, fantastic. Buy V8s, spend. Because yes, that's how much. Because exactly. So, so, the starting point is how much you think you are going to spend. Mm -hmm. Then, when you've had made the aggregation of how much you think you are going to spend, then the next question is how are we going to raise those monies? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now you know the you, you have you have a, a, a history of the tax payments in this country. So realistically, you have in your mind how much. Then you, the government, you tell uh, what's it called, uh, uh, yeah. Jerry, that this year give, bring me this amount of money. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, understand. So the vice president is very insincere when he when he attempts to tell Ghanaians that he, I don't know anything about it. I don't set targets. It's a Jerry himself who set targets. Oh, come on, Vice President. Google says you're the biggest liar. Oh. <laughs> you understand? But now you should be thinking about how to extricate yourself from that thing in Google. But you have you are adding more fuel to the belief that you know, he doesn't speak the truth when he when when he makes such statements. Now let's go to the second one about the small tax bracket. When you go to his speech and uh, paragraph sixty five of his speech, he says that Nana Kufado taxed him to transform, to solve the problems, if not to solve the problems that was preventing the economy to be transformed. And his approach was to tackle those problems by attempting to formalize the economy. Now, why do you try to formalize the economy? It is right that one of the biggest problems we have dealt with in terms of our economy is our inability to raise money. We are not able to raise money because majority of people who do business are invisible to the government because they are not formalized. I want to say formalization. What it means, in, what 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 it simply means is that you are known to the state. We have about sixty-four or sixty-five percent of businesses in this country being informal, that, which means that the right. government does not know them. Yeah, yeah, you understand. So he, when he said that, he, one of his key his approach was to form, formalize the economy. What he was he says he was simply trying to do was to make a lot more businesses visible to the company. To what end? So that government can know them and tax them. But in fact, to even you understand, but that's just one bit of raising money from 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 businesses. Mm. It's one. So the first thing is, in which way are you going to make them formalize? That is, so through registration. But it doesn't end there. You, the government, must take steps to grant them institutional support in terms of how the sizes of their enterprises, in terms of corporate governance, in terms of making uh, having uh, making finance available to such small businesses because you see history has taught us that one of the critical reasons why america is so powerful that we all want to go to america that to the america i say ai because there are more jobs in america than human beings so that's why they are doing ai there are more jobs in america than human beings so they need to create is because of a policy president eisenhower made in 1952-53 he 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 enacted a law called small businesses act that small business act created small business agencies and what these agencies do they're in every district in america all they do is to identify small businesses and eh? give those businesses institutional support one help them to formalize to give them technical support in terms of corporate governance structure because we know that for every company if you don't have the structures right you will fail and thirdly to find a way of getting financing to them and that's why we have something we call loan guarantee schemes so in very serious countries governments institute what we call loan guarantee schemes to find ways of of including proper inclusion of small businesses small business businesses that ordinarily 
can't uh, 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 find favor in the banks. Because you put that because when your businesses are doing well, then you, your ability to raise revenue also increases. And Through see, capitalism. Yeah, I'm, I'm a capitalist. Through <laughs> yeah, capitalism. Yeah, I'm, I'm a capitalist. But you see, and I think every capitalism is also a, 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 a respect for uh, uh, what's it called the poor society after the French Revolution. We will we'll have that discussion on that day. But, but, yeah, but the point I want to make is that's, at least that's what history has taught us. And that's why the Western economy seems to be doing well. And his excellent himself made, I alluded to that when he was in op opposition. That famous speech where he said, You won't get the revenue, so we will we'll be going in a cycle. That's like now you've been given that opportunity, you understand, to solve those problems. Really, they are the problems that are inhibiting. Our economy, and you feel woefully. But in the 60, in the 65th paragraph of his statement, he admitted that that was his job, and that was his approach. So when you go in front of GRE, and you want to find, you you attempt to throw dust into the eyes of unsuspecting Ghanaians, as an, in this his agenda of extricating himself from this calamity of leadership. Then what he's simply telling us that what Google said is true, and that. He's, he's a leader of the uncommitted, uncommitted lot who have caused him so. He's the leader of the uncommitted lot who has breached the fundamental principle in economics we never thought could be breached. The principle that said that the safest place to put your money is, is government bonds. Oh. Then he would tell Ghanaians that he's the leader of those uncommitted bonds that have taken Ghana back into the abyss of servitude. Because we are, we, are, we are back to being colonized. Because if at the end of the day, laws that reflect our values, we are afraid to pass those laws only on the, on the altar of IMF will give us money. Only on the altar of we uh, 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 antagonizing our friends in the West. Then are we independent? So we've lost that, that, that independence because we did, we made a mistake in 2016 in, in giving, making Vice President Baumia the vice president of, of, of this country, 2024, we should sack him because we need to get back the, mora, the, the, the morality that is suppo that, that, that's supposed to surround leadership. Right. Because he has lost it. Right. Clearly, he has Only lost it. I to say that, I feel it, it would be unfair, for, I mean, it, it would be wrong for me to comment on the capitalism thing because of what Panafna TV is. And to say that, oh, no, that's no. the reason, no, 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 not to criticize, but just to say that, I mean, a country that says, or a state that says, I'm capitalist, would have to do these things, what yeah, you speak about, yeah, to sustain it. Yeah. So it's interesting to me that African countries would then take on, or an African political party would say, we are capitalists, when the, 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 the base is, it, it just can't support it. Yeah, exactly. So anybody championing capitalism right now for us is literally on its way to take us to the ditch. No, no, no. no see, it can't be I'm done for to, us. I'm not allowed to. I'm not allowed to. It can't be done for us. said enough. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have time. Sorry. I'm sorry. I really wanted to say one thing. Right. Yeah. Actually, there is some for GRE. There is something they are not doing very yeah. well. Um, so we do know that now droves of Ghanaians have Ghana card, which means that that's your tax identification number. Mm. So for tax purposes, many Ghanaians have been identified. We also know that there is some Ghana Post GPS system, mm. which now when you're going to apply for a bank account, you're supposed to provide. When mm. you're going to do anything mm. that is uh, in the formal sector, you must provide. So at this point, this government ought to have data on everybody or on more people let me, let me not say everybody but on more people than ever before so there is a certain level of laziness on the part of gra as well we are more accessible yes because the information is now there so you need to adjust your systems you need to now bring in this data you need to hire experts people will help you to make sense of this data and figure out where all these people who have been dodging the net are so that you don't have to keep going back to the same people. For me, that is the criticism I would level towards GRE. Right. They should have done that by now. Yeah, right. I, I think that um, I'm not demanding thoughts to appreciate the fact that there's some institutional deficiency. So, of course, I like the fact that Kojo has brought that to the forefront. However, it's also very instructive that GRE and all the other state institutions and parastatals do not work in isolation. They have to mm. work together. So, I mean, what has any NIA done to ensure that they brought all these institutions together in order that they can achieve you know whatever desired um, end that, that they want but i just want to end on this note that look i see what vice president dr baumia is doing it's okay it's nice <laughs> to try to extricate yourself from the shackles of the disaster 
that have characterized this administration, right? It's, it's fine, it's okay. However, in doing so, he must be minded that Ghanaians are not the Ghanaians that we used to know uh, uh, in, in 2014, 15, 16. Now people are actually very aware. Yeah, we are citizens. People, people are very aware. People are now <laughs> active players we in this citizens. political um, um, discourse, uh, dispensation. So we have to be very minded. He has to be very minded. I, I see what he's trying to do. It's fine. It's okay. In communication, I think it helps that you are trying to say that, yes, even though I'm part of this administration, I am part only to the extent that I can. my views are accepted. But beyond that, I do not have any control. That's understand, uh, understandable, right? But in order to gain the confidence of the people, you need to let them know that, yes, I am part of it. I can agree that in some parts, we have failed. In some other parts, we are doing well. In some other parts, oh, we, we are done well. Or we are trying. If you see, oh, we are not trying. All, all that, all that, no, but, oh, uh, wouldn't you have rather that the vice president came to you and was very open and blunt with you that listen i agree that you know the economy is struggling at least However, you wouldn't call him a liar yes yeah. at least yes at the very least you won't call him, call him a liar yeah, but that i agree or not really great that I, I agree that the economy is not performing creditably well i agree that xyz you understand however we are doing xyz even if it is true or not he has admitted in part that we have challenges but also in the other on the other hand he's telling you that we are trying or trying to solve the problem. And you see, honesty in, in, in our 21st uh, uh, century. century politics is very crucial. Mm. And that is why sometimes I find, yeah, and that is why sometimes I find that that is the little edge Bahama has over Baumia. The little edge. And I'll explain why. Because you see, I mean, when we, don't we were faced with Dumso, Mahama was very clear that yes, do but, so. I can't uh, but, do but, so. But, However, hold on. However, this is going to bring a debate. I am okay. We don't have time for. No, we don't have time for. But, 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 but then again, it's important. Right. That look, Doctor Baumia. I see. You see. Look. If I, if you sit, if you sit um, behind, uh, or rather, let me say, if if you look. So in sociology, uh, we have objective and subjective analysis. So you can be both subjective and objective, but if you sit behind and then you look into the fray of what they are trying to do, it's quite clear, it's quite as dramatic, right? But they need to do it such that uh, Ghanaians do not feel insulted. Right. You, 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 right. you get my point. Right. They need to do and it very is important. Yeah. I have to agree with yes. you. Yes, because in terms of communication, I'm a, I, and I believe you would agree with me that mm. MPP is trying you know, in terms of communication. Come I mean, please sum up for me. <laughs> in terms of communication. Well, well, we, don't, well, we, don't we, don't <laughs> we don't have time. We don't have time. We don't have time. We have just about two minutes to leave. I okay, have one more issue Thank to you do. very much. Thank you, Kwame. Thank you, thank you so <laughs> yeah, much. Man. I had a few comments. I'll save my own comments because of time. Yes. So I won't, I won't say anything. Right. Yeah. Two seconds each. Um, in the space of communication, um, this evening, every issue we've dealt with has had to do with communication. Okay. And so far, everybody has scored zero in our books. Um, I dare say the next issue is also about communication. Perhaps you're going to score him zero, so I don't know. I'm going to wait for what you have to say. But we heard what um, uh, 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 our, our political veteran, um, in the person of uh, Mr. Christy Ahoy, you know, has said recently. It's The video has circulated widely. People have had, you know, wild takes on it. He has come out to apologize. Um, do we forgive him? Oh, I, mean, I don't see anything wrong with what he said. <laughs> and really, because when you go into our, our constitution, if you are vice president, you are there because the constitution understands that there's a chance that the president will, will pass. And so, so if, so, and, and so when you are rising, you must always be, be, be prepared. Mm. So if somebody says that, uh, what is wrong? You see, I, I, I think earlier, could you say something? Which probably is the reason why we think maybe you know we, we have a culture and in Ghanaian culture we think that you shouldn't say anything that would make people think that uh, somebody would die but we would die <laughs> and because of the fact that <laughs> we all die <laughs> yeah, 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 we just don't know when and and also the only reason one of them key reasons because we should we should, we should because we probably we are, we are all very young but in the first in this 1960 constitution there was no pos position of the vice president there's a reason why the vice president position was made was made subsequently you understand and it's because there's a there's, there was a recognition especially with what happened in the u.s with uh, jfk dying and then the need to put somebody there 
who ought to be prepared. So I mean, personally, my personal honest opinion, I don't see anything wrong with what Kusiawaye said. I think, if indeed, I think that his advice to Jean should be applauded because, he, because clearly, if you analyze uh, what's called G, uh, what's called uh, Atamilz's performance, one of the strongest economic performances we've seen in the country, and then the debt Mama took it. Clearly, he was not prepared. You understand? So if somebody is saying that, listen, Jane, prepare, don't be like Mama. Who came unprepared? Prepare. Because anything can happen. We wish we wish it doesn't happen, but it could happen. Prepare. I don't see what the issue is. Really. Right. So so that there was no need for even an apology. So it was, it was, it was, right. it's the pressure. He's doing what uh, Victor also did, which has caused you know Victor also said something as uh, uh, said something and then they said oh he, he said uh, I was or you were looking well as I said, when 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 you take when you take the full speech of what he said there's nothing wrong really with, with what he said and he came to apologize yeah contextually and he came to apologize and that was his end. If I were Kwesi Hawaii well I, I, I'm not him but probably was personally I don't see the need for the and I also don't see the need to why the uproar in the in the first place. Did he lie? Is the reason? Is it not the case that the reason why we we have a vice president? One of the key reasons why we have the vice president that's one, is because there's a chance, and we've had that history. We've had a history of our president passing. That's a painful history. A very painful history. history. A very painful that history. Maybe that's why there's an No, but no, but, but it means that. But so once somebody said, no, because of that painful history, Jane, make sure you are prepared. Right. Because Jomama was a key part of that painful history. Clearly was not prepared, and we all saw the consequences of his, unpre his unpreparedness. Yeah. Very debatable. Could you come in? <laughs> oh boy. Okay, I'll be quick. <laughs> NBC has somebody cursed you guys. How is it going you guys? Look, look at what is happening in the country today. Could you enter his No, look at what is happening in the country today. You got to do so, <laughs> right? You've got an economy that is tanking. We can't pay our bills. The currency is creeping back into the ditch. Yep. 12, 12 cities to a dollar. Parliament is a shambles. They can't, you know, they, they, are, they are into a bickering, you know, match with the president. President can't sign a, a, a law because he's afraid that his, his uh, you know, his, uh, yeah, his uh, diplomatic friends will shun him. Look at the state of the country we are in. You people have nothing to talk about. Except this. <laughs> this is what NDC has to talk about. That somebody should be prepared because the president can die. But the, the, first of all, I mean, you have to jump over the audacity of someone assuming that no matter what, you have won. You see, that seems to be the mentality of the NDC. I keep describing them like uh, Arsenal football team. They, want, they think they can dribble the ball into the goal. They think it's a done deal. They think this election is won. Do you know how embarrassing it would be if they maintain that attitude to the end and then these MPP people take small advantage and beat you? Them, you, them, whoever <laughs> I'm talking to. Which one is my camera? You. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see how embarrassing it would be? If they sit back and think it's all done, and then they lose. But that's what they're doing. Look at the issues that you could comment on. Look at the things you could take the opportunity of that night to say. And he said, you say somebody should be prepared because the president can die. That's what you want to say. <laughs> Look, let me tell you why it's such a preposterous statement to make. In this country, in our constitution, if the president goes to Aflau and steps over the border into Togo. Vice President is President. That's our law. Yeah. You don't have to kill him <laughs> in order for the Vice President to, to be <laughs> President. So if you want to tell someone to be prepared for the role of Presidency, why must you use death? Why death? Just tell her that once you once we win this election, be prepared to step in as president at any given time because it's part of your job. Any time the president travels, you are president. Why do you have to bring in death? When you know your history. 
when you know your history, you had a president who died. And today, your political opponents, like a bunch of kotobunkus, are using that as an excuse, calling for autopsies and all kinds of ridiculousness. You know that your opponents are doing this. And that's what you wanted to say in your toast? He has apologized. I, I understand. And I, I think the apology should be accepted. I mean, I have great respect for the Ahoys. Yeah. And you see, but, you, you have to, but it was a colossal lack of awareness. That led to that comment being made. That apology should be accepted, yes. But that lack of awareness is not, is not, is not befitting of their hoys. And I mean, let's be real. These are the godfathers of Prof. Nana Jinnipukwajima. These are the people who are the wind beneath her wings, backing her to go as high as possible in this political journey. They want her to become vice president. So this should be the last people to be heard talking about what she should do if the president dies. Do you get how distasteful it is? That should never have happened. Right. Never. Under no circumstances is that the right thing to say. In front of no audience is that the right thing to say. Right. Meanwhile, there are millions of important things to be said. Look, you guys should be hitting this. You guys should be hitting the streets by now. You should be demonstrating. You have dozens of reasons to be actively rallying Ghanaians behind you if you want to win the next election. Otherwise, you continue doing this. This so and before you know it, you've lost. Thank you, Kuju. And you are in, you, you've broken the eight of opposition. Thank you, Kuju. Thank you, Kuju. Police car godfathers. Um, um, I Kwame. think you took notice of the time that was used. <laughs> oh dear, Kwame, we don't have time. In expressing, oh, Kwame. Uh, no, uh, the we don't have of, time. You see, I, 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 I don't think that there was express mention of death in the statement that he made. Oh, there was. Talked about Tamil dying and making no, the no, president, no, was, uh, yes. president. But there was no, no, there was no express mention of death in relation to the assumption of power by Professor Jenana Opukwajiban in the event that Mahama is not there. There was no express. So if you look at that space, there was no mention of death. So we are contextualizing. Now, yes, it's, it's communication, right? Now, what did he say? What did he intend to convey? How was it received? Those are the three key things that you must look out for. And I agree with you, and I'll come to the point that you made about the fact that the NDC is not doing things right in terms of how they are even taking advantage of some of these um, platforms, right? But to be fair, how many years can Mahama go? Four, correct? If Dr. Baumia, who in the scheme of affairs was never in contemplation at the time when he was selected to be the vice president, okay to be given the opportunity by the largest political party in government to lead the party into the 2024 elections then it's possible for any and everybody to get the opportunity to lead the MP ndc fortunately it is professor jenana upokwajman who is running mate to his excellency john dramani mahama me how i received this message was that Mahama only has four years. So, Professor Jane, do right by the party people, do right by the Ghanaian people, and the throne could be yours. Now, the characterization feeding into the explanation of, Pro of Professor Atamius's death, right, in trying to explain what he he meant or what he yes yeah, what he meant when he said you know prof should be better that's why we are here because the circumstances surrounding the death of professor atamels you know has resurfaced that people want to understand the cause of death of professor atamels so assuming without admitting that professor atamels had served the stem okay and had gone for eight years and john dramani mahama had taken over from Atamels. Would we have had this conversation? Would we be having this conversation about death? It is because he died. 
whilst in service. And when he died whilst in service, the person who had the opportunity to take over was John Dramani Mahama. And still got the opportunity to lead the party into the 20... Was it 16? 2012 wow. elections. And won! So, Professor Jean, everything is possible in politics. Yes, you are a novice in terms of you know, in terms of presidency, presidency, in terms of yeah, presidency, vice president, whatever. You're a novice, right? However, put your house in order, and there's a possibility that you will become the first female president of the Republic of Ghana. I don't see anything wrong with that. So, look, but for Koko Adido, who's rantings, this would not have been an issue. And look, Joyce Bawa Mukhtari was at that function, eh. Mr. Tutubi Kwachi was at that function. Together with several other leading members of the NDC. Do you think that Kwesi Ahoy is so foolish that he would have made that statement if he meant, if that statement meant or wished that, uh, uh, that, that uh, uh, what's his name, that Jodamani Muhammad dies? You think he would have made that statement freely when he knew that Josba Mukhtari was there. I'm not sure he's that foolish to make that statement. <laughs> do, do you understand what I'm saying? So on this score, to be honest, I think that is much ado about nothing. And I agree with my senior when he indicated that there was no need for a, a, a response. An apology? A response, an apology, whatever okay. it is. Like there an was, Yeah, there was no... no okay. First of all, the Apro, of course, is understandable. But that's why I'm saying that depending on the context, if you are, if you err on the side of the argument advanced from the perspective of the death of Professor Atameus, then you are well within your right to up, to, to engage in... To be in, upset. Yeah, to be upset. Mm -hmm. Okay? However, if you also err on the side of the argument I'm advancing, then there was, there's no need for that appro. And so, if, of course, I mean, if, if you suit or serves your purpose, you would tend to define it how and explain it how you want. Right? But... Of obviously, the maker of the statement is the one who understands what he what he said. The devil even does not know the intention of man. So we cannot sit here and purport to understand the reasoning behind the statement that he made. We can only conjecture by reason of lack of clarity. However, on this occasion, in my estimation, quite frankly so, it was clear as daylight that he meant that after the expiration, in the event that NBC wins, okay, the four-year term of John Dramani Mahama, there's the possibility that Professor Nana Jane Opokwajiman could be the uh, 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 flag bearer of the NBC and yeah, subsequently be the, the president of the Republic of Ghana, right. just as Dr. Baumia has been given the All opportunity. Right. And on ending on this, on, on ending on this, just one second. Look, and I applaud Kojo. He has made a fantastic fantastic observation respectfully respectfully right. i beg you, you don't have time. observation mm -hmm. and that observation is to the effect that there are there are plethora of issues that the ndc must begin to take advantage of he cites doom so he cites this this economic malaise he cites you know uh, the, 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 the tax, tax regime there are so many so i want to believe that this is the time that they focused their attention, all of it, on what is relevant and eschew what is irrelevant from their discourse. Thank you. They must not finally at all think that they have won the 2024 elections. It's not a walk in the park and it's not the last nail in the coffin just yet because you don't know the arsenal that the MPP is hiding uh, uh, behind their backs. Right. And they must be prepared for any eventuality. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, could you... Sentence. Okay. Sentence. Yes. Sentence. Yes. Sentence. Uh, my criticism of Prof. Ahoy is not that he said a bad thing. Right. It's that he said something that can be interpreted as a bad uh, yeah, thing. Absolutely. Right. Uh -huh. right. absolutely. So, no, I agree with you absolutely. that I don't think he had a... He said something with the intent of absolutely. saying something uh, Absolutely. No. Right. 
but he chose words that can be misinterpreted. Misinterpreted. There were better time. things he could have yeah. focused on. It was too ambiguous, that. given our history. Yeah. And so we all accept the apology. Yeah. And we even say that it was needless. Lawyer, you say that apology was needless, yeah. based on how you decide to interpret yeah. it. I've enjoyed myself with you, gentlemen. Today we had no disagreements, you know, and what <laughs> No disagreements. No disagreements, Kwame. Now, because I'm sitting here, uh, Kwame, 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 so thank you for watching. Uh, feel, keep your feedback, you know, coming in. Next, if you are back, same squad, you know, to do justice to the issues as well. Truthfully, truthfully. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. African. Ha! How can we do some local fast food?